Hi, this is Ralph, and I'm back at making my three-column layout. In the last video, we accomplished creating a basic three-column layout with a header, left column, center column, and right column. Now, I want to update this a little bit. Now, I want to create a, a footer section as well, and then we'll work on centering this three-column layout within the browser window. Now, you can ask you know, 10 different web designers how they go about doing a multi-column layout with a footer and you'll probably get 10 different techniques. But let me just show you one that I think is pretty simple and rather straightforward. So let me jump back over to my markup here. And just as a reminder, let me go down to the HTML. Okay, so I've got my wrapper div which contains everything on the page. Then I have my header, left column, right column, and center. And let me show you what we can do here to make this really easy for us. The left column, right column, and center, kind of consider those to be in the, let's say, in the top portion of the main section of the page. And in fact, what I'm going to do is I'm going to contain them within a div. And I'll even call it uh, div ID equals main section. Okay. And then after that, I'm going to go ahead, after my center column there, which is the last one in my main section, I'll do a closing div and give this a comment. End of main section. Okay, so I've got that. And to really emphasize this too, I think I'll go through and I'll just tab all of these items in. There we go. So I've got my header section and then I have my main section. My main section includes my left, right, and center columns. Now after my main section, this is where I'm going to create my footer. Okay, So let me uh, bring this up a little bit here. There we go. So after my main section, I'm going to create another div. And I'll put this down here. ID equals footer. Okay, so the footer is after my main section, but of course before the end of my wrapper. Okay, so there's my footer. I'm going to go to my uh, style sheets here, and I have to create a rule for my new footer. And my footer, I'll go ahead and set the height to be about 50 pixels tall. And I'll do a background color, if I can spell the word background. And I'll do a black with some uh, yellow text. There we go. Got that taken care of. Back over to the browser. Refresh. And there's my footer section. So header, left, center, right, and footer section. And we could keep breaking this up even more. So we can ask, well, gee, what if I wanted to have two columns within my footer section? What if you wanted your footer to have two sections? All that's very, very possible and quite easy to do. If you really wanted two sections in your footer, then you would go to your footer area and put in div id equals foot1. Div id equals foot2. There we go. So now I've got two sections in my footer. Foot one, foot two. Well, what about the how? You know, how do I say one's going to be half the left half and the right half? Well, I just back up to my style sheet area. I now have these two footer sections, so I'll go to foot one. I'll make its width fifty percent of the available spot. There's my percentage sign, and I'm going to do a float left. Oh, we need a little background color action just so we can see it. Um, how about background color, pound sign, zero FF. And let's just leave it at there. For foot two, I really don't need to do much uh, except for background color. So my footer two isn't going to have a background color. Back over to the browser, F5 to refresh. There we go. So my footer section one is in that light blue. My footer section two is has no fill, so I can see the black coming through. So, wow, wait, why is that blue one so short? Well, I never set a height. If you remember, my footer, which is the black box down here, is 50 pixels tall. Well, and if I want my footer section one to take that up, I'll just go to foot one, and let me go ahead and add in height, 50 pixels, 
save that browser refresh there we go so now I have my footer section 1 footer section 2 and it will expand and contract depending on my browser width alright so that's great now what if I don't want my three column web page layout to expand and contract like this I want it to be fixed easy enough to do since we used a wrapper remember a wrapper is a good thing and you're gonna to want to include that wrapper a lot so back over to the markup I'll just head over to my wrapper and I'm gonna set my wrapper to be I'll do 700 pixels wide I'm gonna do margin 0px auto which means 0 pixels of margin on the top and the bottom automatic margins on the left and the right since the width of my wrapper is going to be narrower than my full browser width you're going to see a horizontal centering I'll go ahead and save this back to the browser refresh there we go so now this is my web page three column layout notice that if I expand and contract the browser my three column layout stays centered but nothing gets resized now if my browser window goes smaller than 700 pixels then I do get a horizontal scroll action which is a pretty undesirable effect so if you're getting a horizontal scroll at a reasonable browser width then you've got to take some time and you have gotta fix that up at full browser resolution my three column layout sits horizontally nicely there in the page okay so that looks pretty good I'm gonna go ahead and copy this address so we can check it out in another browser. Let me pop open Internet Explorer. This is my three column layout in IE. Let's pop open Chrome for a moment. There's my three column layout in Google Chrome. What else have I got on here? How about Safari? I haven't used Safari in a while. And there's my three column layout in Safari. There we go, basic three column layout.